Hey there everyone, it's Elmarie, call sign KJ5LXP, and for today's video, we're going to be going on a fox hunt. I'm really excited, this is only my second fox hunt, but we're going to be alongside two members of the McKinney Amateur Radio Club. I will also be running APRS so that you can track and see where we go round and round in circles. That should be fun to see where we, how we end up and how we travel, but I'm really excited and it should be a good time. Let's go! Ham radio fox hunting, also called transmitter hunting or tea hunting, is a radio scavenger hunt. Someone hides a small transmitter, the fox, and sends out a signal on a set frequency. Using directional antennas, attenuators, and your radio, participants track down the signal by following its strength and direction. It's a fun way to practice radio direction finding skills, learn how signals behave in real environments such as hills, trees, and buildings, and get outdoors and build teamwork with other hams. Here in North Texas, many local ham radio clubs make fox hunting a regular activity. Some clubs even build their own foxes and award points to members who find them, turning it into an ongoing competition. The best part? You don't even need a license to participate. Just a radio that can receive the signal. It's a hide and seek with radios. All right, we're hunting Felicia right now. So Felicia is one of the two foxes that are out for the McKinney Amateur Radio Club. The other one was Steve. We hunted Steve successfully a couple weekends ago. Steve is actually a stronger, I mean, a more difficult find because Steve puts out a stronger signal. So whenever signals are stronger, it can be harder to pinpoint a, a fine tuned location because the signal can reach further out than if it were a smaller radius. Your signal is smaller, it's not as spread out. You can pinpoint that location better than say a stronger signal with a larger radius. So right now my radio is on the frequency 433.500. This is the frequency that Felicia is transmitting on. So if we hear her signal, we'll obviously get a, we'll receive that signal. So yeah, let's go get her. Here I'm explaining, we know the fox is generally around the McKinney area. So we're driving around hoping to hear Felicia's signal. Janice phones me via radio and we check in with each other after driving around for some time. Kilo Juliet 5, Lima X-Ray Papa. So Janice just radioed me and, and she also is hearing what I'm hearing, which is absolutely nothing. So unfortunately we have not heard Felicia's signal yet. Hopefully we'll hear it soon, but we're gonna continue driving around and hopefully pick her up. Not too long after we start hearing Felicia's signal, but it's barely breaking squelch. Here's some of that. <laughs> There we go, there's Felicia. So we're getting closer. Let me bring Janice. NZ5W, this is Kalo, excuse me, Kilo Julie finally Max Ray Papa. Did you hear Felicia? We got just a barely, barely breaking squelch. How about you? Yeah, I was in and out, but no signal. I didn't even see like a signal strength. It was that weak, but we're headed in the right direction, it seems. Sounds good. I think we still will plan to turn on El Dorado and start going across, but I agree, I think it feels like it's farther south, so glad we're coming this way. And C5W. When fox hunting, you're not only waiting to hear for the signal, you're also looking at your signal reader if your radio has one. So we got no signal there, but listen to this. Okay, now I'm seeing a signal strength. Okay. Now I don't know Morse code. Everyone, anyone who does and knows what the the dits and dots or dashes are there, uh, please let me know. I think it's CQ is what someone told me, but um, yeah, I don't know. I can't confirm because I don't know Morse yet. So right now we're gonna pull over um, because we were able to hear her and get some signal strength on there. Rob has a directional antenna. It's a Yagi antenna, and. We're gonna get out and get that directional reading so we can get a better idea of where we need to be heading. Ooh, that's loud. Hello, I'm Felicia the Fox. I'm, 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 I'm,
some peeking there in the red. So right now we're just pulling into a parking lot to get that uh, directional reading. So we were about to pull over, but Janice and Rob decided to flip around and search another area for the signal. As we're driving, I want to pause and talk about signal readings and why having a radio with a signal meter is so important in fox hunting. This is one of the very first lessons I learned on my very first fox hunt. Just because you can hear the fox signal doesn't necessarily mean you're close enough to start searching on foot. A signal might sound loud and clear through the speaker, but that doesn't tell you how strong it really is. The signal meter gives you a visual reading of the actual strength. Janice and Rob didn't want to waste time jumping out of the car until that meter was showing a clear peak because that's when you know you're getting close enough to make your search worthwhile. So the takeaway here is always use both your ears and your meter. The audio tells you the signal is there, but the meter confirms how strong it is and it helps you decide when it's time to stop driving and start hunting on foot. So we're in downtown McKinney and there is a lot of activity happening. Looks like a fun little farmer's market or just a market where everyone's got their tents and their booths all set up. Yeah, we're driving around still right now. Haven't heard a strong signal since that school area before we went to go turn out. I don't, I don't know why, but we didn't decide to do a directional reading. Since then, I have not heard a stronger signal. She's around here somewhere. What does the fox say? In this case, uh, Felicia is saying CQ. We're thinking, see what, what we want to do next. I'll be right with you. Oh, uh, never mind, Rob. We can't do that from here. All right, well, let's just get turned around and start headed back towards town. I copy. Kilo Juliet 5, Lima X ray Papa. Let's, let's head for that school. This is NC5W. Okay. Sounds great. KJ5 LXP. Oh, I'm holding y'all so they don't fall over. Okay. Yeah, we're definitely getting a stronger signal as we go west. It's definitely stronger in this direction. That is for sure. Okay, we're going to park and uh, see what Rob and Janice think. Fox hunting isn't always quick. Some days are easy and other days like this one takes a little bit longer. Here Rob is using a Yagi antenna with an attenuator on his radio. Attenuation is a key once you're close because strong signals can overwhelm the radio and keep the meter maxed out. By adding attenuation or even tuning slightly off frequency, you weaken the signal just enough to get accurate directional readings. That's how you go from the signals everywhere to the signals right there. Yeah, like I know, Google Maps out and just start looking at Go into this neighborhood? I just think we have a... We just need to look for anyway. parks. We're not going to go through neighborhoods. We're going to look for parks. All right, so we just stopped to get a reading, and yeah, we're still not uh, close enough at all. So with fox hunts, apparently the best places to be looking for are schools, park, that's mainly it. <laughs> They're, at least with the McKinney Amateur Radio Club, that's where most of these foxes are located. There's a lot of green space here too, so not in a bad spot to be considering to get out and uh, find our fox. Trial and error, folks. Trial and error. Still nothing yet. All right. No, I was in the red a little bit. Back there? Yeah. Felicia, Felicia, you are tricky. Oh yeah, it's way stronger up here. Oh, this is the town. Okay. I know exactly where we are. NC5W. I think we should turn right here and explore this park. NC5W agreed. That's where we were headed. We're going to stop at the parking lot and take a reading. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Solid red. <laughs> here. Can I see? Solid red. Yeah, that's a promising signal. Let's go see what Rob is finding on his Yagi. Oh yeah, red. solid red, red. No. solid red. Yeah, we have it. Yeah. Red. Well, let me let Let's me find get some my shade. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're close for sure. Yeah, right here. There's shade right there. 
There she is. There she is. Okay. Okay, let's get out of his way. There. Cool. You're going off frequency right now. Right, because we have an offset attenuator. Okay. We're gonna, we may have to go much farther off frequency, but... So we're hearing her out here, let's see. We're getting a stronger signal here. Sorry. And we're off frequency by four megahertz. Let's see if it's swing around this way. So, so seems like maybe this way it's uh, a little bit stronger. We could either start walking that way and looking around, or we could wait for another couple minutes. I would say let's just walk we're that way. Something this way. Let's walk this way. Yeah. We just came from, right? Yeah, that is. That's where our car is parked. We checked all those trees. Did we? Carefully? Notice you hear Rob say, wait, the signal is now stronger back where we came from. And that pretty much set the tone for this entire hunt. Before I show you more clips, just take a look at the area we had to search. I mentioned earlier that foxes are often hidden in parks or near schools, and this spot had a lot of that. There was a massive wooded area where a fox could be easily tucked away, a big softball and baseball complex, a lake with trails wrapped around it, multiple schools and parking lots, and even a full soccer complex. This area was huge, definitely the biggest park I've ever had to cover. Granted, this was my only second hunt, but you can imagine the possibilities here. And Felicia's signal had us running in circles. One moment it was strong here, then strong there, and before long, we had looped all the way back to where we started. What we didn't realize at first was that the fox was actually tucked away behind the park. There was a parking lot near an old movie theater, right off the highway. An incredible sneaky hiding spot no one would think to check. At one point, the signal was so strong, I actually removed the antenna from my handheld. And I was still picking it up loud and clear. That's usually a dead giveaway that you're right on top of it. We were honestly about ready to give up. We had other things to do that evening, but as a last ditch effort, we started driving around the parking lot to hopefully see if, with our eyesight, we could finally spot something out of place. And that's when Rob and Janice, well, yeah, let me show you. So I think we just found her. Where? Oh my gosh. Wow. In this movie theater parking lot. This was so hard. This was tough. Because of all the different opportunities to, to place her. There's a park here, that parking lot over there, a park over there, high school. There it is. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're good. So, where are you guys going? Okay, so, it's back up in downtown McKinney. Uh, it's called Guava Tree. Guava Tree. Guava Tree. Cuban. It's, it started as a food truck. It was like on Food Network, and now they just a tiny little restaurant, but they've got really good Cuban food. And it's a All right, let's go. Uh, Guava Tree. Yay! We did it. Woo!